What would you do if you suddenly discovered treasure? How about stumbling upon a literal gold mine, which could make you rich beyond your wildest dreams? Wouldn't you want to announce to the world your newest discovery to let them in on your newfound riches? Today we're going to be talking about one such instance where something like that happened, except with a twist. In this video, you're going to learn more about the strange case of fraud that shocked the entire mining industry. The story of Bree X. What exactly happened to Bree X? How did they shock and defraud the entire mining industry? And what was the impact of their dastardly deed? Well, that's exactly what we're going to be talking about in this video today. So sit back and relax as we dive in and look at the Bree X gold scandal. This story is a lesson on how all that glitters is not gold and how you should always be cautious of whatever it is you invest in. Welcome back to Business Explained. Let's get into it. So Bree X, what exactly went down? Well, Bree X was founded by this Canadian businessman named David Walsh back in 1988. In 1993, a guy named John Felderhof, Walsh's business partner, suggested that the company go looking for gold near the Busang River in Indonesia. They hired Filipino geologist Michael de Guzman to be the project's exploration manager. After some time digging around, de Guzman announced some fantastic news. They had struck gold. So what happened next? Now remember, if you want to learn more about schemes, economic hiccups, and frauds like this, learn more about all things money, get educated about how to do business, become business savvy, and enjoy more videos like these, subscribe to my channel and click on the notification bell, and may you be granted with many, many sweet returns. Since Briex was a small mining company based in Calgary and prior to 1993, they did not make much or any significant profit. To address this, it was Felderhof who advised David Walsh to buy a property in the middle of a jungle in Kalimantan, Indonesia. The first estimate of the site was roughly 2 million troy ounces. By 1995, the site's value went up to 30 million ounces. By 1997, it was 70 million ounces. In 1989, the stock had only been listed in the Alberta Stock Exchange. A few years later, it was listed on both the Toronto Stock Exchange and NASDAQ. The stock price of the company went up to 280 Canadian dollars, and it had a peak market capitalization mounting to roughly 4.4 billion dollars. However, the story behind its growth had many twists and turns. The discovery and loss of a vast fortuner, a mysterious death, and hidden agendas, all of which left all of those on the outside confused and bewildered. Following the Guzman's announcement, he and his team were able to show thousands of core samples with gold. Briex's market value shot up from almost nothing to $6 billion, and analysts were bullish on the company's stock. Investors and analysts marveled at the sudden emergence of this hot new, quite literal gold mine, and lots of investors' money poured into the stocks. Many major miners wanted to get in on all the action. However, there was one major problem in this whole thing. There wasn't actually any gold, and unfortunately for them, the investors and analysts were none the wiser. However, the scam began to rapidly unravel in March 1997. Michael de Guzman reportedly fell out of a helicopter while flying over the Indonesian jungle. It was believed to have been a suicide. A few days later, a body was recovered from the jungle. It was missing its hand and its feet, and its penis had been surgically removed. A lot of the body had also been allegedly eaten by animals, and was only identifiable by its molars and fingerprints. However, it may or may not have been the body of the late Michael de Guzman. According to John Macbeth, a journalist, the morgue from which the helicopter had come from was missing a body. No one else had seen the body except for another Filipino geologist who, upon seeing it, claimed it was really de Guzman. Additionally, one of de Guzman's supposed wives was receiving financial aid from somebody long after de Guzman had supposedly died. A potential partner in developing the area called Freeport McMoran did some digging and reported that they had only found a small amount of gold around the property. The project was led by an Australian geologist named Colin Jones, and he had his team claimed that the area only had insignificant amounts of gold. After this, investors went into a panic. Many began to sell off their shares, disheartened by the recent developments surrounding Briex. You know what Briex did in the response to the whole ruckus? They demanded more reviews. However, the results were not great, and Briex began to fall silent. 
In order to seek an outsider's opinion, Stratcona Minerals was brought in to study the place and make its own analysis, and they revealed a shocking discovery on May 4th, 1997. The samples that had been brought in from Busang had been salted with gold dust. Some of the gold that was found had actually just been shaved off of gold jewelry. The gold had also been taken out of other mining sites. However, they have never been able to figure out and prove when the gold had been added to the samples. So whether it was there before de Guzman had supposedly discovered it was there or it was added after the discovery of the gold mine was announced cannot be deduced. One thing is for sure though, the gold that they had found was not the gold that they expected to get. It certainly was not the gold the investors expected from Briex. Soon, trading in the company was suspended on both the TSE and NASDAQ, and Briex filed for bankruptcy protection. So what happened after that? Simply put, the entire thing was one big golden fraud. The company faced lawsuits with furious investors who had lost billions of dollars investing in Briex, and the entire Canadian stock market became topsy-turvy. The company went bankrupt on the 5th of November 1997. David Walsh maintained that he was innocent, and he moved to the Bahamas in 1998. In his home, he was held hostage by two masked gunmen demanding that he turn over all of his money, but the whole thing ended amicably. However, Walsh died of a brain aneurysm on June 4th. With both de Guzman and Walsh gone, only Felderhof was left behind. He was charged with illegal insider trading in 1999, but he was acquitted in 2007. After the whole debacle, security regulations in Canada were strengthened, and the standards for disclosure for mineral project was developed to make mining projects more transparent. What are your thoughts on the Briex gold fraud? What do you think really happened to Michael de Guzman? Do you think Briex knew that they were dealing in fake gold before they got discovered? Let me know what your thoughts are. Comment them down below in the comment section. I will be responding to all of you who comment during the first hour of me posting this video. If you enjoyed this video, you should definitely check out my other video titled Y2K, Remembering the Greatest Economic Disaster That Could Have Happened. Have you ever thought about what the end of the world would be like? When was the last time you thought that it was curtains for humans? What did you do to prepare yourself? Well, today, I will be telling you a story about a time that people thought they were in for the greatest economic disaster to ever hit humankind. But it didn't happen. That's right, we're going to be talking about Y2K, or the greatest economic disaster that could have happened. What exactly was the Y2K problem? What potential economic implications could it have had on society should it have happened? And what was done in order to prevent us from getting into a bind? Check out Y2K, remembering the greatest economic disaster that could have happened, and join me as we take a closer look at Y2K. Stay tuned, stay educated.